Hey guys, thanks for uh, coming to the meeting today. Uh, we want to do a show here about overcoming fear. I know a guy. Which guy? He's a great guy. Downstairs guy? No, it's a guy I know. Another guy. The guy downstairs. You want me to call the guy? Call the guy. I'm the guy. Well, yeah, you are the guy. The first time I faced fear was when I went to church. My mom believed that Jesus' blessing didn't go past the second row, so we all had to sit in the second row. And I mean, I remember I never said anything in church, but they gave me a memory verse, Proverbs 15. It was soft answers turneth away wrath, while grievous words stir up anger. I was supposed to say this in front of the whole congregation next week. And I stood in front of the whole auditorium, I drew a blank. And that's when I knew, I said, Jesus, please help me. But God came on my right shoulder and said, say soft. But the devil came on my left shoulder and said, say anger. And it was soft, anger, soft, anger. I was like, God, give me a sign. And God gave me a sign that day. E-X-I-T, exit. <laughs> I ran out the church not going back. They said, Brother Jay, come back. I was like, no turning back, no turning back. Well, that was weird. Now let's talk about women empowerment. I know a girl. <laughs> He knows a girl. He knows a girl. Well, listen, here at 100 Huntley Street, there's a lot of work that goes into the production of a daily television program, and we thought it'd be fun to invite you into what it's like during a production meeting. I don't think it's exactly like that, but I can tell you, sure, we do have a lot of fun around here. Now, later on, you are going to be talking to Jay Martin. Comedy doctor? Comedy doctor, right, hmm. because he believes laughter is healing, and studies are actually backing this up. Research has shown that laughter has an anti-inflammatory effect, if you can believe that, protects blood vessels and heart muscles from the damaging effects of cardiovascular disease. Let's try it. <laughs> <laughs> that actually is do, catchy. Do, do you feel better? I do. Well, I, do. I, I feel a lot better. My blood vessels are doing just great right now, and I hope you are feeling better as well. A little bit of medicine for the day. Right, we just gave you your medicine. <laughs> there you go, right? I'll take that medicine every day. Okay. Well, listen, there is an exciting event coming up in the area of where we are right mm -hmm. now for young adults. Here is Christina Loris with more. My guests today are curators of an event that will bring 1,500 young adults from across Canada to southern Ontario for an event called Fluid on Saturday, March 7th, 2020. Their mission? To lead this group of millennials towards a beautiful invitation into the kingdom of God. Welcome, Cyril and Matt. How are you thank guys you. doing? Well, thank you. Good. Thank you. So I know that I'm very excited to attend this event on Saturday, March 7th. Can you tell us a little bit more about Fluid and what's going on? Well, for me, it started about nine years ago, almost 10 years ago. Paul Yoon called a few of us. I was a pastor of a young adult church called Free Church Toronto downtown. And uh, he knew that I was working with young adults and I was in my kind of 30s. And uh, he said, hey, we want to do something with young adults. I know you're really creative. You do art, artsy stuff. Uh, how about you guys help us do a reflection room and you can help me do the creative components, mm. spoken word and pieces like that, that will attract young adults. And I said, I'm in. And then uh, that's where I actually met Matt. Uh, he basically called a, a team together and we've been doing this for about 10 years. And it's been an amazing experience. Every year we see more, more kids coming out. Uh, the young adults are being blessed by the lab speakers and the, and the topics and so basically we've kind of created this event where young adults in Canada can come uh, together and enjoy some solid biblical teaching but at the same time start to catch a, a little bit of a glimpse of what it would look like for them to integrate their faith into their whole life. Yeah I know as a young adult myself I've gone through life and sometimes I have questions of more. There must be more to this life than what's going on in front of me. And I know so many of young adults around me have left the church because they don't have that answer. What are you guys trying to achieve through this conference this year? Uh, through the conference this year, we're trying to just start the conversation. Mm -hmm. um, we recognize that a conference can't be the answer, mm -hmm. um, but it's a launching pad into an ongoing conversation. And so our hope is by pulling them together, uh, by placing some different speakers in front of them that are going to work through the book of Matthew and talk about this idea that there's more than this, that will begin a conversation. And through our website and through other platforms, we hope to carry on that conversation throughout the year that invites them into an ongoing journey. Mm -hmm. Why is it important that a young adult, a Christian young adult, would invite maybe their non-Christian friends to an event like this? I think it's a place where they can actually see what Christianity looks like in this century. 
uh, the, a version where it's not just uh, older people, but they see people like them embrace the gospel. They see older people uh, as kind of people that or they'll be there someday, but right now they can see their own peer group embracing Jesus and how Jesus makes a difference in their life. And so it doesn't seem like something, oh, maybe I'll think about that later. It's like right now Jesus can change my life and make my life as a young adult better. And I think that's a really important thing. Mm -hmm. So, so many people are attending. You said there's about 1,500 people that attend every year. Is there a deadline for signups or how can people get more information about this Fluid Young Adults event? Yeah, our website, fluidgathering.com. Our, our early bird is sold out, but you can register Darn. and take <laughs> advantage right up until the day of the conference. And so yeah. uh, there's still lots of time to come and be a part of the experience. And I know you have some amazing speakers and a Fluid uh, Young Adults, con uh, the singers are going to be there. Can you yep. talk more about the speakers coming? Oh yeah, we have a great speaker. So uh, we have people coming from all over. We have uh, VJ from uh, right hometown, Bruxy from hometown, and then also Ethan Clark is coming out from out uh, west. And then we have Rebecca Lyon. Yeah. Mark Clark, sorry, yeah, Mark Clark, yeah. <laughs> Mark Clark is coming down from out west in the village church where he started a church of 15 and grew it to 5,000 people. Uh, so you can see, uh, homegrown kind of Canadian talent. And then uh, Rebecca is coming. She's got a great experience of, of depth of spirituality. Her new book, uh, Rhythms of the Sacred, is something that I think everyone, uh, once they hear her speak, they'll, they'll recognize uh, the, the, the thirst that they have within for God. Yeah. I know that being amongst a group of young adults is something that's so impactful, especially people that are striving after God. And I know that I'm excited to be there with the Huntley team. So uh, yeah, we're really looking forward to it. And if you guys want more information that you missed here today, there's a website that you can go on and we're just going to throw to a promo talking all about what Fluid has to offer for you and your family and anyone that wants to go. In life, you'll always want more. More time. More clothes. More education. More pleasure. More influence followers but what if we truly believe that there is a God who does want us to experience more out of life a God who wants to give us more than what we could gain in this life what if there's far more beyond Right here, right now. He is an actor, producer, writer, musician, motivational speaker, philanthropist, but Canadian comedian Jay Martin may be best known simply for making people laugh, which is a great thing to be known for. Yes, it is. Being a comedian, that's my life. I love doing it. It's Finally, something I did with my life that I really enjoy. Is there anything better than just a great audience? Like somebody who actually oh. just laughs at everything? Well, that's the best. And the ones that laugh and they have that little <laughs> noise at the end of it, those are my favorites. Are they? Music Snort to my ears. Laughter. Snorting laughter. That's the best audience. The audience that gives you the energy that you can bring back to them, that's always the best kind of audience. I agree. Watch. I completely agree. Not that people laugh at my jokes, but you know, just a great audience. Just a responsive a audience is always great. Yes. So you're known for clean comedy. Tell yes. me about that. Um, to be honest with you, I, I started comedy at my church. That's where I started, and uh, I've always done clean comedy. It's me. It's where I'm most natural. I think one time I tried to go a little risque, and it was just not me. And I said, you know, I stuck with it. And my mom, when I was young, we'd go to church. She always wanted us to live up to our family name. And I always feel she's watching over me from heaven, so I don't want to do anything unclean. But it's just, it's just good, and it's more competitive. There's less of me out there than the other comedians. So it gives me a lot more opportunities to perform in different places. That's a good way to look at it, because I was wondering if saying that I only do clean comedy closes right. doors, because it seems like it, it's almost like you have to be able to go there in order to do comedy nowadays. It's weird when you say that, but it's like, as a comedian, we can perform anywhere. Funny is just funny. So if it's a comedy club, I come up, it's clean. People don't even realize after they're done that, hey, he didn't swear. And it, it makes room for less heckling. 
Ah, and true. That's what we want. Yeah. And you know, you're so committed to this. Mm -hmm. You have actually produced shows and required yes. people to sign like a release form saying, "I will not go there." Right. And you've told them, if you go there, you won't get paid. Did you yes. really tell people that? Uh, we have comedians that we put on their contract that they just will write off their paycheck, and no one wants to write off their paycheck. And what do they? Uh, how do they respond they to that? They have to be able to do clean. Like even for television, there's clean, but my audience is clean, especially on Mother's Day. I do a Mother's Day show running for about 17 years now. And uh, mothers are there, and grandmothers are there, and kids are there. No one wants to hear profanity. So if you can't be funny in the minutes I give you, I don't want you on the show. I actually love that. Sometimes, I, you know, I don't know if you've ever done this, but you're laughing at a comedian over mm. something inappropriate, and you feel bad yourself. And you catch yourself. Yeah, and yes. you feel guilty. Because it happens. You're like, Why did I laugh at that? It happens, especially now. To be honest with you, we're really in sensitive times, social media-wise. So what's correct to laugh at? I find a lot of people laugh out first as their first you know, intuition, and then after that, they're like, should I, am I able, is that fair? Uh, I think laughter is, is the key to a lot of things. It, it's healing. Yeah, you actually call yourself the comedy doctor because yeah. you think it's so healing. Tell me about that. Well, it's funny, I hear, you know, there's different type of doctors out there, and I'm like, where is the laugh doctor that just makes you feel better? And I've been told on a lot of my shows that people come and they enjoy the performance, but they get to forget what's going on in their day-to-day -day lives that is really stressful. And just to, to be able to laugh it's a great feeling. So I let off those endorphins. I call them the endorphins, and I call myself a laugh doctor. It works. I love that. Not a PhD, but it works. <laughs> works for me. I love laughing. And you know, uh, but things that are not funny, though, you've been through hard stuff too. Yeah. And you know, I think you probably love to give people laughter because you know that in yeah. those dark times, you need something to lift. Well, to be honest with you, that's how it started. I was in high school and my mother passed away on my 16th birthday. The funeral was the same oh, day. It was really a rough one. And I remember going back to school and being isolated. A lot of the kids, it's not that they were mad, they just didn't know what to say. None of their friends had lost their parents. So when it came to me, it was kind of like, instead of feeling uncomfortable, I'll just not say anything to them. Um, and then we'd have all these basketball games. Our team was very good. We went to the Mustangs in Malton. And I would be in the stands. And the more I cracked jokes, the more people wanted to be around me. So it was kind of like an internal healing mm -hmm. to overcome the stress. Uh, in high school, I was diagnosed with shingles early and they were like you're way too young at 18 to have shingles and I remember seeing a psychologist at the time um, to help with grief management and they were like you wouldn't make it to 21 if you kept internalizing this stress and from that day forward I changed my life in terms of making people feel better laughter and it made me feel better and I'm not 18 anymore I'm still kicking it so I'm happy so it worked. Mm -hmm. That almost seems like a gift that your mom gave you in a strange way. In a way, yeah. It's kind of like healing yourself and it, it is from the inside. So that ability to make people feel good about themselves inside, I really take seriously. It's not a gimmick, it's truth. And you're doing something that you love. Like a lot of times in life, people don't get to do what they love for a living. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I'm one of that one, I think it's a 1% or 1.2% people that really actually enjoy waking up every day doing what I feel like doing and what I've been gifted to do. And that gift comes from God. You are a man of faith, grew up mm -hmm. in a faith family. As you mentioned, your mm -hmm. mom, a huge inspiration. Mm -hmm. Tell me about that moment that it actually became your faith though, because we can't live our whole life based on someone our else's. Parents. Yeah. You know what? It's when you feel adversity. It's weird because as, as a child, I know we were get, get up, you're going to church. My mom made it clear we had to be the first ones in church. She believed that Jesus' blessings didn't pass the second row of the church. <laughs> So we had to be the first oh, no. one in the first or second pew. And um, we'd be there all the time and going through it. And the songs, as you know, the hymns, they just become a part of you. And then you're like, when does this become your story, not her story? Exactly. Right? And, and it became adversity. I lost my brother at an early age at 12. And uh, our family really bonded together. And if it were not for our faith in Jesus at that time, I could see it all going away. And uh, my faith was very young, God-given. Uh, I've been blessed and sometimes people think of things as a miracle of God and they think it's weird but I really tend to believe that my guardian angels are around me. I've been through a lot of injuries, health concerns and all of my friends call me Mr. Glass because it seems like I'm always getting something operated on like between losing different body parts, gallstones, <laughs> appendix, uh, neck surgery, reconstructive neck surgery, oh they goodness. all were like it happens to Jay, but I think it happens to me because my back is the broadest. I'm the one that bounces back a lot easier. I think I heal myself on the inside. So to go through that adversity and be able to do this is, is a testimony. 
Do you it know what is. I mean? So this is my testimony. This is what I live to do. And I, I, I think that's what's giving me longevity in the game. So laughter is part of your own healing as well as healing others. But yeah. tell me about like practically, how does faith help you get through that hard stuff? You've been homeless, yes. lost your mom young, yes. lost your brother, yes. so many health problems. <sighs> how do you do it? You know what? Because when I get my blessings, they come a lot bigger than other people's blessings. Examples, even when you look at things in life, like for example, when I had to go through the surgery and I came out of surgery, which should have been a two hour surgery to take two discs out of my neck. And when I came out, I knew, and it was like eight hours long, it was just too long, something went wrong. But my faith and the people that came to visit me, we'd pray on it, we'd believe in it. And they were like, we're gonna start from zero, you're gonna start walking. And to this day, I can stand on stage and no one even realizes that I have like limited rotation of my neck. So if someone comes over here, I'm not gonna see him. Mm. But it's that test of faith to know and it's I, ironic that it's your back, you know what I mean? You can't see when it's coming, but you have to have faith to believe that you're being taken care of, do you know what I mean? Though I can't see back there, it's kind of like someone who's blind and their other senses kind of get bigger. That's my sense. I feel there's a governing angel around me and my faith gets stronger. No matter how low I've been, I've always been able to get back up. And it's, what else can you explain it? It's the honor and glory of God that helps me feel that I know this. I pray, I'm not ashamed of it. I, I, I let it be known in all my social media when I'm performing, God bless you. Some people are ashamed to say it, I'm not, because it's without, without him, I wouldn't be where I am today. I can't imagine that you would be here without it and without the gift of laughter. Thank you for sharing it with uh, all of us. You're so such an inspiration. It's good, thank you for having me. You're yeah, awesome. awesome. Well, I hope you're encouraged by the comedy doctor today. I just love Jay and his passion to make people laugh. I mean, I was thinking, you know, as I was listening to the interview with Cheryl, when I was a kid, I used to, I was a class clown and I used to have to spend a lot of time in the hallway. Currently, I disrupted the class often, but I love to make people laugh. And I found, you know, as I've traveled to many parts of the world and we've seen some horrific things, we cry a lot, but we also laugh a lot. It's a gift from God. And I hope that you feel encouraged today. I know I do as well. Now, when do we walk away? It is a book that we just absolutely love. It is changing my life because we have to understand what is the difference between a difficult person. My wife would sometimes tell me I'm a difficult person, but not a toxic person. So how do we know the difference? Well, I'm glad you asked because here's author Gary Thomas. The main reason we walk away from toxic people is to walk toward faithful and reliable people. Uh, my life was changed in college. We had a wonderful Christian ministry where the campus pastor made sure everybody knew 2 Timothy 2-2 by heart. When Paul says to a young minister, whatever you've heard me say in the presence of many others, entrust to reliable people who are qualified to teach others. Mm. So we want to find those people who are open, who receive what God has given us and then multiply it. It's the same thing Jesus said in the Great Commission, teaching, make disciples of all nations, teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. So we want to obey the truth, but find others who want to know the truth and obey it as well and put our effort there. So, so for me, it's about what's the wisest investment of my time and energy. Is this person one who's not only going to be helped, but will help others? Those should become my first priority. Mm. Now, here's one of the things that I took away from reading this book is that if you have toxic people in your life, they can drain a lot of energy from you and it actually prevents you from the people that you should be investing in. And I, you know, Gary talks a lot about in the book about the disciples and, and being with people that you can invest in. It's so very important. You know what, it's freed me up to get away from some of the relationships that maybe were dragging me down and then into invest into people that really want to get help. So here's how you can get your copy of Gary's book, When to Walk Away. Take a look. God has given each of us a gift to let our light shine for the world to see. But at times, Toxic people can hinder who God has called you to be. There are those toxic individuals that are out there that they're going to be a waste of time and they also deplete you from reaching out to others. It's time to create the kind of life that would compel people to respond to the gospel. From best-selling author Gary Thomas 
comes the book, When to Walk Away, Finding Freedom from Toxic People. In the book of Luke, how many times Jesus walked away from someone or let them walk away from him without him chasing after them? This month, with your ministry gift of $25 or more, or when you become a new monthly partner, request your copy of this insightful book that shows us how to focus on our God-given purpose. Call 1-800-265-3100 or visit crossroads.ca slash freedom. Request your copy today. And we want to get great resources into your hands. This book is so important. And again, if you're like me, you get led sometimes by guilt. Well, you know, i got to love everybody. Well, yeah, we need to love everybody, but we don't have to invest in everybody. And as Gary was saying, even in that promotion there, is that even Jesus walked away. So you can walk away. And trying to understand the difference between somebody that you want to pour into and somebody that frankly, it's just wasting your time. So we want to get this great book into your hands. When to Walk Away, give us a call, 1-800-265-3100, or you can go to crossroads.ca slash freedom for a suggested gift of $25. I know Cheryl and I both say this is a very important book, so get it today. Well, coming up next, Bible commentator Danielle Strickland. Hey, we're looking at one of the most familiar passages of all time, uh, Luke chapter 11. You might not know the chapter and verse, but you will know this prayer, the Lord's Prayer. It is recited literally by millions of people all around the planet because it's the way that Jesus taught his disciples to pray. But it's not just the words and the order of the words that matter. It's the way. It's the spirit. It was what Jesus was inviting the disciples to understand, that prayer was about connection and prayer was about relationship. And there's some things that we're learning as we go through this passage of scripture. This is a Luke 11, verse 2, and it's after Jesus is saying, when you pray, in other words, set a time and a place to pray, pray, Abba, Father, Daddy, God, know that this is about a relationship with God who loves you as a father loves their child. And... Uh, the next part of the prayer is hallowed be your name. This is now hallowed, and we would recite this without even really thinking about it. I don't know how you feel when you hear the word hallowed, but I feel a little bit spooky. Hallowed, it kind of feels like a little bit spooky. It actually is holy, which again, doesn't always help because holy feels so religious. And actually, I don't, uh, this is helpful to me, but holy is translated other than, different from hallowed be your name or holy be your name means that God is unlike anything else or anyone else we have ever come in contact with. I remember a friend of mine, Gord, he was so transformed by the power of Jesus in a prayer. He was actually just awakened almost from death. He had drug addiction problems and all these things going on in his life. And he had this powerful encounter with Jesus and he realized, whoa, this is real. Like God is real. And he just started reading the Bible and praying just naturally out of this overflow of his heart. I remember him coming to me saying, I think I figured out the book of Revelation in the Bible. And I remember saying, wow, that's impressive because I've been at it for years. I'm not sure I quite understand. And he said, no, I've been reading this book of Revelation and it keeps saying that all we'll do all eternity long is we're just going to say, holy, holy, holy. And he said, I think I get why. I said, well, do tell me why. And he looked at me and he said, well, think about it, Danielle. We're going to take one look at God. We're going to take one look at Jesus on the throne. And we're just going to say, holy. <laughs> and then we're going to take another look and we're just going to say, holy. This was different from, this was bigger than, this is greater than, this is more loving than, this is more inclusive than, this is different from anything else I ever understood or comprehended before. And this is when we come to God, we understand intimacy, Abba, Father, but we under, also understand, holy. God is different than. So no matter what your baggage has been or what you thought before or what you understood of a religious, angry, disappointed God, God's holy. He's other than. He's different than. He's for you. He's with you. He's Abba Father. Let's pray. Thank you so much, Danielle. Well, we do have a great event coming up mm -hmm. here in Southern Ontario. And hey, I know there's great events happening across this nation. We're gonna keep reporting on those as well. But this Saturday, Christina Lloris, you are gonna be there. Yes, I am. And I'm so excited to be there. 
you know, interviewing some speakers, interviewing some young adults there, like me, who are so excited to just be amongst a group of people worshiping the Lord. I think it's so exciting. You, you know, we hear the statistics, all the young people leading church and that, but there are people that love Jesus and they want to come together. It's going to be a lot of fun. Oh yeah, and lucky for us, here today in the studio, we have the yeah. Fluid Worship Band performing Living Hope for us. I'm inspired. We had a little bit of comedy and the food worship band. Thank you guys. Yes. You're awesome. I'm going to sneak in the back door because I am a young adult at heart. Oh, I thought you said you were going to join them to sing a little bit. Well, I would, but they would turn my microphone off. <laughs> hey, did you know that we are getting a makeover for the $5 bill here in Canada? Yeah. And, and I'm going to admit right off the top, I'm totally biased because Terry Fox, we all know of Terry Fox, and that foundation has raised ten min, tens of millions of dollars for cancer research. Well, he's from my neighborhood. Port Coquitlam, I grew up in Coquitlam, and he was an amazing guy. And so his name is being floated out there along with about 299 others, but Terry's kind of at the top of the list. 
Yeah, and I know that I am a fan of Pauline Johnson being nominated for this $5 bill because not only is she a part of the Indigenous nation, she is also a woman, and I think we should get another woman on the bill. Okay, well, I'm not going to give my vote right now, but, you know, you can nominate somebody. They have to be deceased for at least 25 years. Yes. They have to be a Canadian citizen. That's right. And they have to be real. They have to be real. real. Right. So <laughs> yes. Andrew Gables cannot make it, unfortunately. But great She's not real. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well, make sure you get in your vote for that. Uh, <laughs> okay, Fox for Fiverr. So you can get on and you can vote. There you go. Thanks so much for joining us today. <laughs> See you next time. Bye-bye. Terry Fox. Thank you for your ongoing support of Crossroads, a member of the Canadian Council of Christian Charities. You can write to Crossroads, P.O. Box 5100, Burlington, Ontario, L7R 4M2. Cheryl Weber's wardrobe, provided by Melanie Lynn. Yeah.